Welcome to the True Love Secrets Revealed Online Summit with Experts. Today, our expert is Denise Kavalevskas. She is a narcissistic abuse recovery coach, speaker, and international best-selling author. She is a survivor and thriver of narcissistic abuse. Denise's mission statement is to enhance the lives of survivors of abuse, utilizing the four pillars of healing to empower women to heal the trauma and awaken their true potential, thereby creating an extraordinary life after narcissism. Welcome, Denise. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Natalia, for having me here. I'm so excited to do this interview and share these messages with your audience. Yeah. How do you even know if you are dealing with a narcissist? Or mm. with that is such a great question, Natalia. And I'm so happy you asked that question because there's a huge misconception out there about narcissism. And it's it's not everyone who shows up as a narcissist is an actual narcissist. And I've been guilty myself for, for taking someone's behavior and immediately labeling them uh, from my perspective, right? Narcissistic. What I've discovered through my own nine year now research of this specific topic is that number one, narcissistic behavior is a trauma response. Mm. And putting up with that toxic behavior is also a trauma response. And number two is when we heal our own trauma while in the relationship, there's two things that will undoubtedly happen as a result of one person healing the, you know, their trauma, their own trauma. And the other person will either meet them where they're at or they will and get curious about what they're doing and, and feel the energy of like, oh, wow, you're so happy or lighter or whatever. Um, or they will um, fall away, fall away out of the relationship in a good way. It won't be like a, a traumatic way. It'll be a good way. So yeah, the, the misconception is, is a lot like we were saying before you hit record, right? A lot of people can show up narcissistically and really, really in that behavior, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's, they have NPD. Right, right. Well, that, that is so, so important to know. So mm -hmm. what comes to my mind is I told you a little bit about my story, how I was married to a narcissistic, which I, I think it, he was narcissistic. And I couldn't, I couldn't, when I was in it, I couldn't tell. Because right. the way he was manipulating me, um, he was making it sound as if everything that was happening was my fault. Mm -hmm. All up to me, all the good, all the bad, everything was because of me. So mm -hmm. what could I have done in that case to, to be more aware, to be more certain of what was happening and uh, to have more security and more confidence that, yes, I was in trouble and yeah. yet, there is something I can do. Yeah. So that's one of the biggest ones, Natalia, is the blame called the blame game. Blame everybody and everything for everything in their life. So for example, you know, I didn't go to college because my parents couldn't blah, 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 right? Everything is a shift of blame to somebody else. So that, that is a huge red flag that I share with people. The other thing, how you know if this person is actually narcissistic, um, if you're dealing with a narcissist, is the lack of empathy and compassion for other people, right? right? Cause I, I remember my ex, he would, he would cry and pout and play the victim about himself. Oh. But when it came to other people, it was, oh, screw them or I'll screw them over or, you know, things like that or be mean or whatever. So that's a, an, a, the biggest one that I share with people is how do you know you're actually dealing with an actual narcissistic person is that they lack empathy for other people. Okay. 
Yeah. Can that show us criticism, like they don't like anybody? Would would that be a be a sign of narcissism? Or they or they put on a show to like people. They put on a show to look. They're very very brilliant at acting. Brilliant at acting. So yeah, they will act like oh I like so and so or very uh, charming, charismatic, or pleasant to these people. But then it's it's behind closed doors where the truth is coming out. Oh, that person was this, or I just da da da. da. Yeah, very um, gossipy and stab backstabbing. Oh wow, wow. So yeah, so blame. Mm -hmm. is one sign if we are being blamed for everything there mm -hmm. is i mean in a relationship it takes two to tango so mm -hmm. that is one sign and the mm -hmm. second one is lack of empathy or compassion regarding others but they can yes the victim or poor me really yeah well. and then and the they do and they do <laughs> <laughs> So thank you, Denise. That was wonderful. So what was the process you went through to create a magical life after narcissism? Mm, a long one. <laughs> and, and that's why I share this message with other women, Natalia, is because I want to show women that they don't have to take a long road like I did. So I, I left my ex and the only state that I had ever lived in with nothing but a futon couch and an air mattress in my 40s to start all over again. Um, wow. I didn't ask or want anything from him because we had been married over 20 years. So I could have, you know, asked for this or whatever, but um, I didn't. I chose not to. I was a woman on a mission and I was a traumatized woman, an angry woman, a deeply emotionally hurt woman. Um, behind all of that, I was on a mission to happiness and freedom and confidence and to have my true love. So all of that came to fruition when I asked, when I was asked this by my first empowerment coach, when she asked me this question, and I'm paraphrasing, I don't remember exactly what she said, but something like, what part did you play in the destruction of your relationship like oh, in wow. your divorce that question. yeah yeah and at first I got, I got pissed right I was angry at that question because prior to that I saw myself as the victim in my situation not a contributor mm. to my situation so that question shifted in me to take 100% responsibility for my own life. And it happened gradually. Like, like I said, I was pissed off right away when she said that to me. And um, from that moment on, I went deep into my healing journey because it really like it was a pivotal moment. It really sparked something in me. And because I wanted to have everything that I ever dreamed of having. So the process was and is for me to go within. It was always to go within because I believe that the way out of narcissistic trauma is to go within the narcissistic trauma and to heal it. Wow. So through first loving myself a hundred percent, like all of it. And then it was, um, forgiving myself, forgiving the past, forgiving him, my ex, and just letting all of the stories go. The third one was to trust myself and to trust my path of where I was at now. Cause you know, being divorced at, you know, 42 years old, starting all over again can look pretty depressing. <laughs> so I had to trust the process of where I was at at the time. And then the fourth one was to get real uncomfortable with my truth mm -hmm. and the real truth, not the truth you know, that we pretend is real or just loving the parts of the truth that we're willing to share on social media. Um, it was the truth of being in the cycles of abuse and re abusive relationships for me since birth. And that was a hard pill to swallow, but a necessary one for growth. Wow. So interesting that you're sharing that. Now, there was any awareness on you that you were abused in your early childhood or... Or it was something so subtle that it was that kind of abuse that is like the everyday, you know, hitting on the nail. Yes. 
because we can be traumatized by repetition of small hits or yeah. by a big, big traumatic event. They both yeah. have the same. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about that? How yeah, sure. You realized that, that you, I mean, you were doing therapy or you were uh, with a coach? What route? With, with a coach. Oh. I was with a coach. So for me and my story uh, in childhood, it was that emotional yelling and screaming type of abuse. It was throwing things around. It was dad was mad. So if he was mad at mom, he was mad at all of us. It was the silent treatments. Like I'm mad at you, so I'm not going to talk to you. And as a child, you know, every little girl wants to have, you know, be daddy's little girl. So it was, and I didn't realize any of this when my coach asked me that I was fully focusing on my ex and that 22 year relationship, never at that point, anyway, looking at where I came from and how that was abusive, which led me to this adult abusive uh, relationship, which was 10 times worse. So yeah, in childhood, it wasn't specifically physical abuse. It was more of the emotional, the manipulation, the I'm going to punish you because you were bad, um, seeing my mom cry, my dad, you know, acting out and a lot of between them two, a lot of arguing fight, her leaving with us and things like that. But, you know, when you grow up in it, Natalia, you don't realize that's abuse. Absolutely. It's like, yeah. I like to call it um, a goldfish in water. If you ask a goldfish, what is water? Well, what do you mean what water is? It's exactly. What it is. Right. So, yes. So I I wonder what made you, because you are in this, re and you have two children, by the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That adds a whole new dimension to what you went through. Mm -hmm. uh, because it wasn't only you. You were also responsible for to little you, to, but yeah. you not know, for your kids. So what was the, do, could you differentiate something that made you really, really grab, I don't know if you call it courage, or maybe you were so upset, you know, we act, sometimes we take action based in courage or in pain or, you know, anger, all those things are very moving into action things. What was mm -hmm. the thing that did it for you? It was... August 24th, 2008. It was the day that my ex-husband had attempted suicide. Oh. And yeah, it was that that day. And our 14 year old daughter was in the next room when he did it. Oh. So that day I had told him I wanted a divorce. And I was like, I was like, ready. I was over it. I had no plan. I was just reacting. I was reacting out of anger and hurt. And I just said, you know, I want an effing divorce. And 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 that long story short, he did that, which led me to a whole nother, you know, slew of, of events that happened. But it was, that was the catalyst to, for me to be like, Denise, this right here is a total shit show. And because in my childhood, as much as I could say about my childhood of all the abuse, there was never that. There wow. was never mental illness. There was never attempted suicides. There was never anything crazy that I define as crazy as that. So when that happened in 2008, that was when I was like, okay, this is just not, it's not working. <laughs> it's just wow. not working. But I did not leave until, I didn't leave him until two and a half years after that incident had happened. Because even though I wanted a divorce and I was serious, when that happened, now I have my two teenagers at the time, right. traumatized, hysterical. And like, then the guilt consumed me because I was like, oh, if I leave him now, my children will think I'm the worst mom in the world. And I will be such, you know, I'll feel like crap. I had a lot of shame. I'll feel like a piece of crap. You know, if I leave him now, even though I needed to end it somehow. So it wasn't until two and a half years later after that, that I actually left. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You're welcome. Ladies, if any one of you is in a narcissistic relationship, please mm -hmm. contact Denise. 
you can tell that you really have the life experience and the yeah for that so thank you for being here so piggybacking on what Aisha said what is the process that you walk your clients through to create what you created the house yeah. on the beach the house on the beach <laughs> Right? Great. <laughs> it's actually, so I walk them through what I call the four core pillars of healing. And three of them, you know, I learned through my own healing journey. And it is like I was saying before, to love yourself. Because when we're in abusive relationships, we, we do carry a lot of shame and guilt and all the things about ourselves. And then that's Part of what needs to be healed is not to feel that shame or blame to heal our hearts to heal ourselves so self-love is a the the foundation of everything if we can love ourselves even though we've been through xyz then the second one it's not in any specific order it's just these four uh forgiveness mm. can't, can't you gotta let go gotta let go of that story like what i just shared with you natalia there was a time in my life when i couldn't even utter three words of what i just shared with you without doing the ugly cry i was just... thinking about that when i was asking you it's such a hard question for me to even ask I yeah machine for you to answer it so thank yeah you. yeah and 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 as i share it with people because i i talk about on interviews and and writing and books and stuff i have a little bit of a charge that still comes up mm -hmm. but it's not so much as it was before where I'll even tear up anymore because I have healed, healed, healed. And I just look at it. Yeah. As a story that I was in. Right. So, so letting go forgiveness is the second one. And then the last two are sharing the truth. So again, saying those words, it was like, oh, my throat would clog up. I just couldn't even get that out. I wasn't willing to acknowledge my truth I wasn't willing because it was just so hard my throat would just like feel like that big lump was in it so truth is another one to be able to share your truth and I tell women I'm not saying you got to get on stage and share it with the world <laughs> just you being able to share your truth with you yes. is huge to be able to say it to yourself write it down say it out loud to yourself that's huge so that's what i mean by truth then if you want to write a book and get on stage great <laughs> i love that you and then yes yeah and then the last one is trust mm. trusting yourself because there's a huge lack of trust when we come from these relationships when we get into these relationships when we get out of these relationships there's a lot of uh, big trust issues so because most of you know abusive relationships involve cheating and lying and all of that so then you you get out into the world you're like well i don't trust anybody because you know we think you know all everybody's like that so those right. are the four core pillars that i walk them through to soften herself and to lean into her feminine energy which right. all has to be done through the healing process because when she can show up in her feminine energy, not the masculine traumatized person that she was before, then she shifts everything and she feels so much lighter and, and like spacious and healthier because she's now healed her heart. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my God. It's those four steps are completely life changing. Yes. We can trust and forgive and, you know, be authentic honor our vision our truth yes uh, yeah move on that's we are lighter we have room to be otherwise it's like we are so full of stuff you know that exactly is, and it's a journey it's a journey a never-ending journey i would say thank you so much for joining us there is anything else you would like to say that i missed asking you that you think it's important for for the viewers to hear I would love for your viewers to know like wherever they're at in their journey, whether they're just getting out of a relationship or to, to really delve into self-love, to really fall in love with herself 
and her journey, because that is going to be the catalyst of her life to, to, for her to create an amazing life for herself. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. And I know you have a free gift for the viewers. Would you mind to share what that is? I do. It is my heal your heart. Cause that's what I'm all about. Mini course. <laughs> and yeah, discover how to find true love and be happier now after toxic love, of course. And so they just put their name and their email address in and they will get, it's like a little mini uh, video series that I share with them. Awesome. And I dive deep into the healing process of how they can first understand what's happened so that they can, it's easy to, to go through the healing process. So yeah, they just put their name and their email address and they will get the three part mini course and they'll learn how to stop attracting emotionally unavailable and toxic men and step out of fear and anxiety and build their confidence back up and release the heaviness so that they feel what I was describing before to feel lighter and spaciousness. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Love that. Thank you so much. The link is going to be on the email that I just sent you. So thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Such a treat to have you. Thank you for saying yes. Thank you for, you know, gifting us your time. And I can't wait to see you again. Hopefully this year I, I get a chance <laughs> to hang out with you again. It's Absolutely. Beginning of January. What a way to start the year, huh? I know. Thank you.